Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the online resources which are widely used in the literature and which are reliable for learning sequences. <coughs> so, just to refresh, what did we discuss in the last class? Pam and blossom matrices, Dynamic right? Dynamic. What are the factors one has to consider for the development of Pam matrix? Mutation frequency, mutation frequency, mutability number of amino acids, number of specific amino acids which are involved in mutation and so on, right. And you can see the probable mutations, right. It is mainly based on the substitution rates, right, depending upon the probability of each amino acid is due to be replaced by other amino acids, right. Then we discuss about dynamic programming, right. What is dynamic programming? So, we divide the um, alignment problem into smaller and smaller parts. Right, small reliable problems and then finally, combine to get the overall uh, result for the given problem, right, this dynamic programming. Then we discussed about the pathways for alignment. For example, if we have two sequences, one is of 10 residues and another with 8 residues, there are several possibilities to align using the inclusion of gaps, right. So, there are we discussed about different pathways and how to obtain the optimal path. So, then we try to apply scores for matching, for mismatching and deletion insertions where we uh, finally try to see what are the uh, probability of having different alignments and what is the most probable alignment. Then we discuss two different types of alignments in protein sequences or nucleosid sequences, right. One is global alignment, another is local alignment. What is the difference between global and local alignments? Global is end to end alignment. Uh, global alignment considers all the uh, nucleotides or the amino acids in two sequences. Local alignment, so if there is a gap in the in the, in the beginning or the end, so it omit the gaps and try to identify motifs or new patterns right inside the uh, sequences. What is the name of this global alignment? Who yeah. developed this algorithm? Needleman. Who Needleman developed this algorithm, right? So what is how what is the criteria used in the algorithm to fill the matrix? Match, maximum of match, match, match or mismatch or gaps or, gaps. or the insertions or deletions. In the case of local alignment, so who developed this algorithm? Smith Waterman developed this algorithm. Say so include one more criteria, right? Um, maximum of the four conditions. So three included in global alignment plus zero, zero, right? So why are the ne negative values? So now in this lecture, we will see how to use this alignments, what are the software tools available in the literature which are commonly used for aligning sequences or to identifying the match for any query sequence. So, why we need this? What is the use of the sequence alignment? The common use for sequence alignment is for you have specific sequence, you have query sequence. First you can see what are the other sequences similar to your query sequence, right. If you have a sequence which match with your sequence, then you can try to understand how far they are similar. Depending upon the similarity or any functionally important regions, then you can infer that your protein has also similar functions. For example, if you have human genome, a region with unidentified function. So, you want to understand the function of these portions or some proteins with unknown function. What to do with this? Right, first you try to see whether any known sequences are matching with your query sequence, right. So, we search with the millions of other sequences in different databases. So, we discuss about different databases for the DNA database or the protein database or the DNA databases, EMBL, EDBJ, right, GenBank and all, right. Like this you have the protein sequence databases called the Uniprot, right and we have also structured database called protein data bank. So, we search with these sequences and see whether your query sequence is aligned with any of the sequences deposited already in this database. Then if the aligned known sequences, they have functions, 
because we discussed in the uniprot and the other DNA sequences. So, you get all the information regarding the structure, regarding the function, what are the links and the pathways and so on. So, now with your query sequence, if you could find a sequence which is aligned with your query sequence, then you can try to understand the function, probable function of your query sequence. Then the information on the regulation, the expression as well as the relationship with other genes, right. That this is why we need the databases, right, to find the probable sequences which are aligned with your query sequence. So, when you align, when you find the similar sequences, what are the major points we have to consider? Your query depends on the size of the sequence. For example, if you have 100 SDUs and you have another 1000 SDUs, right, depending upon the size of your protein, it will take time, but it has to search with the databases. The second one is number of sequences in the database. So, your query depends upon the size of the sequence as well as number of sequences you are trying to align, you are trying to compare, right. The time depends upon these two aspects. So, now considering all these aspects, there are several tools developed in the literature. One of the most widely applicable tools is BLAST, right. What is BLAST? Basic, Basic local, local alignment search tool. In the last class, we discussed about the principle used in BLAST. What are the principle used in BLAST? First, they divide this query sequence or the target sequence into small bits, right. Last time, last class, we discussed about the two residues, right. We can use two or three residues and then see the alignment and get the score from the blossom or the PAM matrices and where we have the value which is more than the threshold value, then you, you can mark it. Then finally, you can see where you can see the marked regions you can align. So, in the BLAST, it finds the subsequences from the sequence databases of a query sequence. So, there are different program names, for example, BLAST P, there is query sequences protein, it will search with the protein database. Then BLAST N, nucleic acids with the nucleic acids, because N and P stands for nucleic acids and the proteins. We can also do the translator ones, the T BLAST N and the T BLAST X. So, for using these queries, so they use mainly the PAM matrix or the blossom matrix to give scores for the ungapped alignments. For example, if you have a sequence, right, A I L V P T V I. So, BLAST splits this sequence into smaller pieces. For example, if you have the four residue segments, they took divided A I L V and I L V P, L V P T, V P T V and P T V I. So, the overlapping segments. Now, see this is the query sequence, right. So, we have the sequence. Now, they see whether there is a match of this query sequence with any of these tetrapeptides in the sequence. So, if you align these two, we can see there is a match, there is A I L V. So, this type of match that is called the high scoring pairs, where all the residues will match in any sub, sub sequence, for example, the 4 residue segments or the 5 residue segments and so on. So, then you extend the match right to further and see how long you can extend the same sequence to be the exact match. So, then once it fails, then you can stop there and then you can see this will give you the high scoring pairs how many times you can have the exact matches between the query sequence and the target sequence. This FASTA is also another program, they also use for the sequence similarity and the sequence alignment. Here the breaks into 4 to 6 nucleotides or 1 or 2 amino acids. We have the query sequence F A M and so on. What they do? First take this sequence and identify the positions. So, F is in the position number 1, right, F is in position number 1, right, take this, this is position number 1. So, they put F, they put in the position 1 and the second one is A, A is in position 2, so we put 2, then M is 3, so we put 3. So, likewise see this query sequence, they made into different positions, right and you can see another F here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the position number 6 also. Then take the target sequence, then compare the target sequence with the query sequence. If you take this G, right, so position number it is 5 here this is 2, so 5 minus 2 equal to 3, then all the another possibility is 12, 12 minus 2 equal to 10. Then we take this next one f, this is in 3, here this is 1, so 1 minus 3 equal to minus 2, right, and then 6 minus 3 equal to 3. Likewise, for the target sequence, 
they made this comparison and put the numbers. Then we look into this one, they found lot of numbers with 3. So, that then this case they tell that okay, if there is more numbers with 3, if you offset one sequence with 3 residues, right, then you can get the probable alignment. So, if you offset the 3 sequences, right, if you see here, so they offset with 3 sequences, then they get good alignment between sequence 1 and sequence 2. So, now how to compare the sequences and how to estimate which alignment is the best. There are various steps, the various measures to examine the scores for the best alignment or the bad alignment. One of the indicators that is used as to measure the alignment that is the alignment score that is yes. This score you can get the with the highly maximum uh, pairs right and also with the p value or e value. Right. These p and e are very important in the sequence alignment and to judge the sequences whether they are statistically significant or not. So, e value is defined as the expected number of sequences which can get score more than s that would be found by random choice. For example, if you get your alignment score say 10 or 15, what is the probability or what is the expected number of times you get that same number? with any score of more than s right? that is the e value. Then p value is the probability of having one or more sequences with the score of more than s. So, we get two numbers one is expected value right whether you get this number is expected or it is unique to your sequence. Then p value is the probability of having this score it is random or that has any significance. These two numbers will give you whether your alignment score is statistically significant or not. Essentially what do you expect the number should be high or less? Less right it should be less because you should not get randomly right. So, these E values and P values should be low which indicate that your search results are unlikely to be obtained by random search. So, in this case you can say that your alignment likely to have evolution relationship with the query sequence. That means what you obtain in the alignment between the query sequence and the target sequence right this is statistically significant and you can rely on your alignment score. Usually we use the value of 10 power minus 3 less than 10 power minus 3 right to be indicative of these significant results and if you align the sequences many cases you will get the values in the order of less than 10 power minus 50 if you align the sequence you will get that. So, what are the features of blast what are the information we obtain by using blast. Can you tell some examples what are the information we obtain from blast, why the blast is used, what are the applications of blast. Right, first you have a query sequence, you can identify the sequences protein or nucleic acid sequences similar to your query, right that is the first one. Then the second one you can identify the members of the protein family, right same uh, pr different same protein family you can identify the members. This can also be used to derive some sort of matrices called the position specific scoring matrices, right I will explain this in after few minutes. Then you can identify some patterns if you have a query. So, if you there are any patterns in your query with the available sequences right you can identify the patterns or the motifs in your query. Then also you can see any conserved domains any regions of the sequence which is similar in all the sequences. For example, if you have several sequences right several sequences and what you have a pattern right and this is maintained in all the sequences right and you see that this pattern is very important for the structure and function right. You can see whether any patterns for your query sequence with respect to the sequences available in the database. Then also you can search for the peptide motifs whether you have any specific motif in your protein as well as with the proteins available in the database right. You can use BLAST to get all the information. So, this is the website in NCBI. So, you can use this website to identify any sequences which are related to your query sequence. Okay. Now, let us see how BLAST works. So, this is the website for the BLAST and if you open the website it will ask you for the sequence right, because that is essential. So, you need to give your query sequence to obtain the relevant sequences. right? So, it asks 
the query sequence in different formats either you can give the accession number gen bank number or in faster sequence or uniprot number or pdb so it accepts several uh, numbers then if you give it then it will ask for the database which database you want to search right because as we discussed earlier two different aspects one we need your query sequence and the second we need a database to search right so first we give the sequence here and we need to give the database right there are several databases available in the literature as we discussed earlier so you have uniprot you have the protein data bank so several databases available so you have to specify which database you have to search then they ask for which algorithm do you want to use is for the protein blast or the nucleic acid blast or you align different sequences and so on so we say protein blast because this i give the protein name human lysozyme so i take the protein blast and you can blast it so these are the different file formats okay you can ask uh, gi format this is a bar separated ncb identifier for example if you see gi and then it's a bar separated and this identifier then success number you can give the uniprot right you discussed about the uniprot database right so you can see this is a number p61626 so if you give this number blast accepts this number and takes the sequence directly from this uniprot database right everything is mapped so if you give these numbers they can directly get the sequence from the relevant databases so what are the different file formats the widely accepted file formats are most widely used formats in the bioinformatics problems right this is fasta format the fasta format which begins with a single line description right followed by the sequence data okay this is the single line description right and here this is the sequence data so in this line you can see this started with the greater than symbol this will distinguishes one sequence to the other sequence right and then you can use as a command so you can write the de description of that particular uh, protein in that line then the second line forward with this sequence right now we end with this uh, amino acid sequence right so these fasta files so they have the format and they also end with this extension of dat fasta right you can give the fasta files with the extension of dat fasta then this is another format that is nbrf national biomedical research foundation or protein information resource right so in several cases even now they use a pr formats so what is a pr format it begins with greater than symbol and p1 p1 is for the protein sequence and n is for the nucleic acid sequence right so if you see here this is the for the protein sequence and followed by the sequence and then end with the star that means this is the one complete sequence right this is the format used in pr so in this case these files have the extension dot seq or dot pr right then the program will understand this is a sequence file or it is a pr file there is another format gd format this is also similar to the fasta format and the difference is only it starts with percentage this is the formats used earlier in the literature currently the fasta format is widely used and in many bioinformatics uh, problems here this have the uh, extension dot gd all these formats they ignore spaces as well as the carry return so if you have space automatically this will ignore spaces and take the sequence continuously so now this is the query sequence so we have the query sequence you can give in different formats either we give the sequence in specific formats or you can give the access number right uniprot number or ga number and so on then the searchable database so we have to provide the database to search there are different options available in the blast the widely used one is the non redundant data sets they whether you say the rough sequence proteins or the pdb or the uniprot and so on or you can see the ncbis reference sequence project or you can use the uniprot data latest release or any uh, data in the uniprot database right likewise you can give different databases like pdb or any specific latest data specific in the month and so on so now the first part is over and second part is we need to define some parameters right the first part what the what did the information we gave query sequence query sequence and database. Database. database and then blast p right we need to add the protein sequence now we have to give some parameters so how many target sequences you need to find right for example if you have one single sequence and if you give the uniprot right uniprot has 75 million 78 million of sequences it will give lot of sequences most of it is 100% it will show only the 100% is highly redundant right so we can 
use the maximum target sequence that you want. Then what is the expected threshold right what is the expected value to find the statistical significant the e value or p value the expected threshold is random the default value is 10 but you can change right then the word size whether you want to split the query sequence into 3 words or 4 or 5. So, the, the random one the threshold is 3 right. So, you can change the word size to see whether you can get different types of alignment or not right this is general parameters. Then as we discussed earlier we developed few matrices what are few different, different matrices you developed prime matrix and blossom matrix. So, here ask you for the matrix which matrix you want blossom cc2 or the pam1 or pam250 or pam1000 we discussed for the closely related sequences which prime matrix we use 250 is normally used right for the closely related sequences we use 1 right for distant related we use pam1000 right for general case we use pam250 right. So, we can select which blossom you want or which spam matrix do you want to use for the alignment right. Then also there are some filters for example, your low complexity regions you want to mask or you want to include and so on right. Now, you click on uh, blast then it will give you the some data right before showing the data. So, I will tell you the parameters which blast will provide it will give you the maximum number of aligned sequences or it will give the expected threshold value right that means expected number of chance where randomly it can match right but we set 10 as a default value. Then word size we did and scoring parameters also we, we finalized we gave as blossom 62. Then subsidy matrix we discussed so we have two different matrices one is the PAM and the blossom. So, depending upon the alignment score we require so we can select any of these matrices. Right. Then gap cost is a cost to create an extent gap in the alignment because if you introduce gap we need to give penalize right because insertion and deletions are not common compared to the mutation. So, we need to give penalty for the gaps fine. So, now this is output. So, we give the input if you see so here the sequence and here either we give a sequence or number or you can have the option to upload the file. So, we select the database and this is the algorithm why what you want to perform and then we give the parameters right the blossom matrix and other parameters we set and if you click the blast it will give you the data. So, here this is your query sequence right here this is 1 to 148 also it is possible if you want to align only few sequences instead of the whole protein if you are interested in some regions for example, 10 to 100 then you can also give the information. So, you want to search only with the see recipe number 10 to recipe number 100 right. So, here we search the whole sequence 1 to 148. So, there are several hits right so with the lysosome super family if you click on that then you will get this number this diagram this looks completely red why it is completely red yeah because we get many sequences which are highly aligned. So, if you look into this uh, scores so most of the cases it is more than 200 right. So, you get lots, lot of uh, proteins which are highly aligned with the query sequence this is where we get the completely red, uh, uh, red dash if your query does not match with the data in the in the sequence database what will happen black. it will black or you can see the other colors right depending upon the alignment scores you will get different other colors. So, now if you click into this one so this each line represents each protein which are aligned. So, this is a result right. So, your query sequence so you aligned with the different other sequences right you can give this maximum score right uh, and then the total score right here this is only the highly aligned sequence pairs and this is the total score and you can see the coverage. What is the query coverage? Amount of uh, sequence covered. Covered for example, if you have 148 residues it is aligned with another sequence with 148 residues that means you cover all this residue entire length in this case the coverage is 100 percent. If it is 88 percent what is the meaning of 88 percent? The series are aligned, others are not aligned, right. So, there is not the internal gaps, if there is outside, you can see they are not able to align. Then, E value, so you can see e, e power minus 3, less than 3 is significant, but many cases you get the significant value of e power minus 81 and so on, right, and they link with the other databases.